Let's now start exploring the trends in the Twitter data. By the end of this video, you should be able to request Twitter trends using Python and explore local trends. When we talk about Twitter trends, we mean popular hashtags. Twitter categorizes them by location for places like the world, or United States, or locally for San Diego. The world trends, for example, show up on the left when you go to twitter.com. Twitter tracks trends for using the Yahoo Where on Earth ID for each major location. The world ID is number one. Using the trends.place for the Twitter API object, uh, we can get the top 50 trends for any location. You can look it up online for your location using the link here. We give you two more for US and San Diego in the Twitter notebook based on our own location. We will switch to the notebook soon to retrieve these location-specific trends and display the response we receive from Twitter using a package for JSON for data format. JSON is a semi-structured data format that gets used to pass information in internet applications. It is roughly equivalent to nested Python dictionaries and lists. We will then use this data to create Python sets that we can run intersection operations over. Let's now switch back to our notebook. Now let's use this object we created, Twitter underscore API, to start reviewing some Twitter data. Um, we'll use it to retrieve trends coming out of a particular place. And as we just reviewed, um, Yahoo's Where on Earth ID, or W-O-E ID, uh, gives you a number, an ID number, for each major location that it is tracking. The world has the ID number one. US has this longer number. Um, you can look it up online for your own location using the link here. I'm in San Diego. So um, I'll use the San Diego's WOEID, uh, this 24 something number here, um, from the, uh, after I look up um, from that URL. So here we give you the San Diego lookup. Using now the trends.place uh, from the Twitter API or for the Twitter API object we created, uh, we can get the top 50 trends for any location. So by default, trends.place will give us um, the top 50 uh, trends. Here what we receive, oops, we didn't run again the variables. Here, um, what we receive back is a trend object uh, with a response that's in JSON. Um, as we just reviewed, JSON is a file format that internet applications uh, use to communicate semi-structured information. It is similar to XML if you're familiar with it, but it's more concise. Uh, we can see the response, for example, um, for world trends by querying the first two records. So here in the next code uh, block or code cell, we say world trends uh, and there's a slicing range query there. We get back um, two trends. Um, we see at the top level here, oops, that the fields here are as of created at locations and trends. Uh, we can use this field, the, the, these four fields, um, to check this trends object further and explore with it a little bit. Um, let's say um, trends is local trends, right? And we can type its uh, we can print its type. It's a Twitter list response, that JSON file. And uh, the keys for it are trends as of created at locations. And the trends for the first object, we can actually slice that out 
and uh, display them here. So trends are name, Friday feeling, URL, and things like that. Uh, and we see another name here. And it's going on right now as I'm recording that. Anthony Weiner and things like that. So since the response is a JSON object, let's work with JSON a little bit. You will see this type of data in internet applications a lot. And uh, Python has a module for JSON. Um, let's import that JSON module here and use it in something useful. So in this line, uh, we are using the dumps function of JSON to create a uh, better or more prettier version of the same output. Here we said um, the indentation format. We are saying indent every uh, Neve um, parenthesis or every Neve level, we would call in JSON, um, with one character. Um, it's better, if you look at the output here, it's better than what we've seen, right? We can actually now see the trends. What the trends are, Tom Hardy, Friday feeling with the hashtag, and Tony Boehner, uh, Endangered Species Day. Uh, apparently today is an Endangered Species Day. Um, and things like that. Flashback Friday instead of a throwback Thursday. So we see it was a bike to work day yesterday, actually. It's one of our trends here. So please explore with this output a little bit and see what's going on at the moment you are watching this video. Uh, the output should change and give you about some uh, trends, in this case, local trends. Uh, we will keep using this JSON module in the upcoming cells. Uh, but next, uh, let's create uh, sets of these trends for each location. And then we'll find the commonalities between uh, trends for those locations. Or in other words, we'll find the intersections of these sets. Here, um, we are getting the name for all trends using a loop, set, trend, name, and for trend in world trends. So the first one is for world trends. We add that to our trend set with the uh, world label. Um, the second is for San Diego, oh, sorry, for US. Um, and the third is third set we are creating is uh, for San Diego. Um, so let's run this one. We have now this trans set object. And there are three sets in it, one for the world, one for US, one for San Diego. Um, in the next cell, what we are doing is, we are first uh, creating a for loop that joins all the trends for a particular location and prints them in pretty format. I'd like to actually separate the next four lines into a new code cell as we go along here. So it's going to be a little bit more clear as we display things. Um, here, we are joining trends uh, for all three locations within a for loop. So we'll first join the trends for world, then US, uh, then San Diego. Let's display this, the output of the cell. We'll see that the world trends um, after a padding of 10 dashes and the name of our location, the location for world, uh, we are pr printing uh, all the elements of the trends um, for the world. And for US, we have a similar thing. And for San Diego, we have a similar thing for all three sets. OK. Now, how do we create intersections of these texts uh, sets? We will make use of Python set objects. That's what we created here, as you remember. These are set objects. Um, this set object uh, will give us an intersection function. So let's use that. We are saying here, um, we are getting the set for the world for the topics and intersection of it for US. So the first one will give us the intersection of world and US. The second one will give us the intersection of San Diego with what's going on in US. Let's print these out. Intersection of world and US, as you see, it's a much smaller set. 
And here we have an intersection of San Diego and U.S. It's larger because, you know, U.S. effects affect locally San Diego as well. So there we go. Great. How about if we want to search Twitter for a particular topic or hashtag? Let's move on to the next video to find out.